Good day all, little bow for you and a wave. My name is Ken Roach. I'm doing this video because I'm totally blind, as you may be as well. And life is difficult for us. Even some very basic life skills are challenging. Welcome to my home. I'm just outside of Toronto, Ontario, Canada. And uh, you are in my kitchen. For those who can't see, I am an early 50s year old male. I'm in pretty good shape. I'm not too chubby. I got a nice little. I do martial arts. Um, I'm also a registered massage therapist, so using my hands is something I do all of the time. I'm wearing a, I think a light blue robe uh, because it's morning. We're going to be making coffee. Um, if you're interested, I've got a bit of a beard because I'm lazy for uh, not shaving. It's kind of graying. I hate to admit that, but I believe it's true. I haven't had a haircut since uh, the beginning of COVID, but it's kind of pushed back into a dread. I got a single dreadnought, kind of like a ponytail that goes down, I don't know, the top of my shoulder blades, maybe. If I look up, mid shoulder blades. So that's what I look like, I think. <laughs> I don't know, I have no idea. So I'm standing in front of a 12 cup coffee maker, and we're going to talk today about how to make coffee when you can't see. That came up in our blind pen pals, and I want to do a little series, and other people are welcome to do it as well. And let's call it Be Blind Better, right? Because it's hard, especially if you're getting started, you don't have the skills. How do you brush your teeth? How do you walk your dog? How do you pick up poop? You know, whatever. Um, I have a guy, Doug Gromit, who's fantastic, but he does not make coffee. So you and I, let's make coffee. Okay, so I've got a high angle over my left shoulder. You may be able to see I've got a coffee pot. I've taken the craft, the glass, container uh, by the sink. I'm going to fill this up. I put my finger near the top. I know there's some fancy devices. A uh, good idea to keep your fingers clean. <laughs> I guess I didn't mention I have washed my hands. And sometimes it's easier to feel the water if you wiggle your finger back and forth. So with this coffee pot being full, I know that I'm not going to get too much water. I certainly could use less. But if I use cups and try to fill up the reservoir in the back, I may get too much. So I'm attacking this from the left hand side because I'm left handed. I like using this craft because it's got a nice lip that I can put right up against the edge. And I go beside it and I also put my finger, my hand over top of where the filter would be. That way I know if water is going in there. Now don't let get me wrong, I make lots of mistakes. So I'm just going to tip this on a gentle angle keeping my finger or two fingers inside of the reservoir. You may hear the water going into the reservoir. I've made lots of mistakes. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. I'm right beside the sink, so if I have to, I can clean this up. Worst case scenario, my girlfriend's here, so when she wakes up, she'll see the mess that I didn't see. Now, when I go straight up, I'm hitting the lid of the craft on top of the lid of the reservoir. So I kind of have to turn it a little bit sideways, but because of the spout, I'm turning it sideways to allow that to go past, but because of the spout, it's being directed in and I'm at the very bottom. So I've got all the water into the reservoir. I'm just gonna touch the, the flat part, the iron, because it's turned off. I'm gonna turn, touch the heater, and there is no water there whatsoever. So I'm gonna put that in here. I wanna make sure that that sits nice and centered. Make sure that sits nice and center. Time now for the filter. I have a plastic bag of 100 filters. I, I like to get them at the dollar store because they tend to be a little bit cheaper than other places. Sometimes when I take them out, it's hard to tell if you have one or two. So I, I do cheat, uh, you know, sometimes being blunt. If I have my fingers that are wet, sometimes they help. And honestly, if it's just for myself, I'll put it between my lips. And I try to, I, it just gets the, the, the moisture of your, your lips on the top and bottom, and if there's two, it'll pull them apart. And there's only one. But you can do the same thing with your fingers and thumbs. Sometimes you just gotta, you know, try and have it tacky. So it's just moist, but tacky, so that you can try and pick up if there was two. So this just goes right inside of the, um, goes right inside the filter cup. And 
just kind of press it so that it's it's open. You don't want this to fold over and put the grounds on the outside of the filter. It's important they go on the inside of the filter to keep the messes down. I've got the handle facing up, and in mine, I don't know about yours, but if I went around the top of the, the, the lip, if I go around the very top of the lip where the coffee filter goes, there's a recession, there's a, there's a relief where this handle has to go. So when I put that in there, and I'll know it's in the right spot because when I put the lid down, it goes down. If I had that in another spot off to the left-hand side without that recession, I come down and the lid doesn't come down. I've done that many times too. The only way you're gonna get good at something is to try many, many, many times, many, many things. So I've got a Maxwell House ground coffee. Don Blind from England's gonna lose his mind <laughs> because I'm not a connoisseur. This is not a cappuccino machine. I'm just a coffee drinker, right? So inside I've got a tablespoon. I don't know if they're internationally uniform. I don't know. I'm left-handed, so I'm gonna scoop this. I go right over top of the container and I feel with my other hand a nice rounded mound of coffee. Now I want to take a deep breath in. Breathe out as I go. Much like a sniper, it gives you a little bit of stability. Now I use my other hand, I'll put pen. There's a lot of things going on here. So I'm gonna keep that rounded tablespoon over top of my coffee while I find with my other hand, I'm looking around, looking around, there's my coffee maker. So now if I put my left hand to my right hand, so I'm gonna come around over top and then join my hands together. The spoon's about, call it five, six inches. So as long as my hands are kind of close, I can touch the spoon to the other hand and then dump that in. So that was one. I gotta remember that. That's one. Sometimes counts hardest. So I'm gonna take another scoop. I'm gonna scoop that, like I said. I'm gonna make sure it's a nice round while it's over top of the grounds. Even if I have to shake off my fingers, I'm gonna find the coffee maker with my other hand, take my left hand out, kind of as I breathe out. I wanna make sure I'm stable. And the more you worry about something, the more you kind of quiver and you shake. So you just have to take a leap of faith, take a breath in. And sometimes I find two to three full rounded scoops. Like three is gonna be fairly strong. Four is certainly gonna be stronger, obviously, right? It's concentration, the water's gonna go through the grounds and, and uh, increase its level of caffeine. So I've got three scoops in there. I find that's good. Pulls all that up. Now if I take my dry hand and I go across on the countertop, I didn't have any, any mess, but if I did, I would take a dry cloth and I'm right beside the sink. So I go from the right to the left and this is kind of a mental pattern. I might go really close and then the next one's a little couple inches out and I'm, I'm on the L, I'm away from the sink, I'm going further than I need to and I'm gonna go right over to my microwave and now I've got a clear shot. I would have had everything, anything collected is gonna be going towards the short part to the sink. Now, here, I'm gonna lift up my coffee maker, water and everything, you gotta be a little bit strong. And I'm gonna go right underneath and I'm just gonna keep pushing all the potential dry grounds. Like I said, I'm gonna start like a snow plow like, or a snow shovel, I mean, it's all the same, brooming the same thing, close to the edge, Next one's you know three inches in from the edge. Next one's six inches in from the edge. Next one's nine inches from the edge. And make sure that if you're doing this in one foot patterns from, in my case, right to left towards the sink, I'm gonna go one foot and then six inches and then another six inches and another six inches. I'm trying to get a little bit further left and left. So whatever pile I'm collecting comes together in either in a circle or in a line. And you might be able to feel it. When I get close to the sink, now my cloth is wet and I didn't have any grounds there, but if I did, now my cloth would have grounds in it. I have to shake it out, maybe I have to wash it out. So in fact, whoa, see I just moved it really quickly and now I did spill a little bit of water out of the reservoir, so I will clean that up a little bit. The nice thing about water is it doesn't leave much of a residue. Uh, I'm gonna follow the cord from the back of the coffee maker all the way to the plug. Being that I'm close to the sink, I'm within a meter or a yard of the sink, I have a six pack adapter for the microwave, the toaster, um, which are mostly plugged in, but behind that is a ground fault interrupt. That's a GFI. That's one of those plugs 
um, in case there is any sort of an electrical issue, um, a surge, potential electrical charge that goes through that shouldn't be, it'll turn off. And that's for another day to figure out if that's turned on or not. There is a green light, red light, there's two buttons, click, click. I mean, if you had something that was noise, you know, like a, uh, I don't know, like a radio, I don't know, something that you can make a noise, microwave. You know, you can plug in, push a button, doesn't work. Hit the button on the GFI if you think it's true. Anyways, that's for another day. I'm going to omit all of that. And now you need to know where these buttons are. So mine is like, I think it's a black and decker. I don't really know. I've had it for a little while. Um, there's, if I had to count these buttons from left to right, there's a, a, a large horizontal button. Then right below that, there's another one that could be horizontal. It's, I, I'm, as a massage therapist, they say it's more important to not feel with your thumb. Now, I feel with my thumb, I feel with everything I got. But the thumb has its own pulse and it can kind of throw off what you're feeling. Now, sometimes, like in reading Braille, when I come down on top of that, I may not be able to feel it because the, the front board is meant to look at. Therefore, it's, it's kind of angled down. So when I look down, I should be able to see whatever it's saying. But to touch it, I might have to squat down, that's for another day, but I believe in knee circles because of the shape of the knee, the mechanics of the knee, because I'm a massage therapist and a martial artist. I do a knee circle from inside to outside, and I don't do this. As I go down, I would though, because as I crouch down, now it's easier to feel these buttons. I notice trying to read braille on certain things, especially like the bathrooms and via rail, uh, trying to read the braille stuff. You have to really change your angle because the board that the braille is on isn't oriented to be standing and, and reading. Anyway, so we're back at these buttons. There's a horizontal button on the on the upper left as they come down. This is on the board underneath the craft on the front of the uh, coffee maker. Upper left is a kind of a horizontal button. Directly below that's another horizontal button. In the middle there's one big horizontal button, another little tiny button, and it goes back up. So I think in total there's one, two, three, four, five palpable buttons. Now, I'm making it so I don't know which one it is. Now, there's timers and all kinds of stuff. What we need is the on. I know right down to the middle, the big horizontal button. I need to know what it is. I could mark it, but I don't. My microwave here, I don't have any, any braille dots. Yes, you can. It's not that I don't need them. I can feel inside. Like I, can, I can run my finger, especially when my finger is wet. Um, when I run it over, now this is an older microwave and I'm afraid to change it because maybe I won't be able to do this trick on a new microwave, but this is my microwave. And same thing with my oven. Um, I don't have any markers on there, but I can feel the depressions. If I'm really light, and especially with wet fingers, slightly wet fingers, it makes it easier to slide over. So I'm back on the coffee maker. I'm going to find that central button that goes horizontal all the way across. And when I press with my thumb, it's important to have my fingers in an arc. The arch is a very strong structural shape, and if you want your thumbs to work very well. So I'm gonna press that button, you'll hear a click, and I'm gonna confirm by waiting for a minute. Now I'm gonna check and make sure the lid's down, because sometimes I don't put the lid down. Sometimes, one time I didn't put the craft in, sometimes I haven't put the coffee in, and now I can hear it kind of gurgle, gurgle. It's getting started. So, we'll just give that. A couple of minutes while I put this stuff away. So I've got the coffee filters on top and I'm going to go to the cupboard keeping my hands up. Very important to keep your hands up especially in the kitchen cupboards might be open. Um, I teach karate and I tell kids like why do I have a cut in my face and they're like well because you're blind and you bent down and hit something. No. It's true, but that's not why there's a cut in my face. The cut in my face is there because I did not have my hands up. If I had my hands up, there wouldn't be a cut in my face. I've turned the angle of the camera so now you can see the pantry. I'm gonna come with my hands up, touch the pantry. As a matter of fact, I got lots of cheats. I can have my hip on the, on the uh, countertop. As I go across, there's gonna be a gap where there's a hallway going to the hall, the front hall and the stairs upstairs. Uh, you may even see the dining room off to the right hand side. But there's a pantry, doorway, fridge. I got a wide angle camera. So I'm going to go across this gap. I can take my hand on the countertop or my hip and there's a straight shot. Just reach right across and I can feel the cupboards of the pantry. It's on the right hand door. I'm going to open up the right hand door. 
I like to present this up, palm up, better for your shoulders. Maybe someday you'll uh, care to ask me about why I do those things. And put the filter inside there, close the cover. And we're just waiting for the nice aroma of the Maxwell House ground coffee. Don Blind's gonna lose his mind. <laughs> So this is the sound it's going to make when it's almost done. Interesting to me, uh, I was with a gentleman, unfortunately had a, a heart and, and lung problem, and with the fluid in his lungs it kind of sounded like that, um, just as he was passing away. Fond memories of my friend Mike. <laughs> I, like I said, I do anatomy physiology, it was a fantastic uh, experience, uh, very unfortunate outcome. but. Uh, you know, I was there with him. I, I know he didn't suffer and I, I, until I tried to do CPR and stuff on him, it, but he left very peacefully. At least somebody was there to help or try to help. Okay, so I can hear there's a little bit of steam still in there. Got to be careful. The lid here is going to be quite warm and if you lift it up, there's going to be steam escaping, which can be quite injurious. So don't lift that up. But if you had to, if you want to, be careful about that steam, it's going to be very, uh, it's going to, it could burn you. I don't know if you'll be able to hear that, but I can hear that the coffee trickling into the craft. But in the filter canister itself, there's a spring-loaded, semi-spherical um, funnel, sort of, for the coffee to come out. And I guess the idea is when it when there's no pressure on that, it would kind of collect in the uh, the filter area. Like if you pull it out, the sneak a cup. Some of them have a uh, a function on the coffee maker where you can sneak a cup. I don't know if this one does. Sometimes I do, but it's going to make a mess. But the idea is when you pull that out, it would contain the coffee in the the filter area until you put the craft back in. Then that touches and pushes up on that little funnel piece um, and should release that into the craft. So it's just a trickle now, but I can still hear it. I'm going to listen. I'm going to put my ear close to it and hear it drop, 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 drop. If I lift it up too early and it's trickling down in there, it may drip all over the place. And you might hear it as I take this out with my left hand closest to the camera, you may hear it splash 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 on the hot element underneath so I mean I'm just wondering if I can touch the craft I mean I can touch it but it's a little bit warm I wouldn't want to hold my hands on it unless I'm not going to grab by it so you got to remember where the handle is sort of I mean you don't have to remember I can go in anatomy school you want to touch somebody's elbow to look for their shoulder or try to their foot to go up towards their groin that way you're not going to you're not going to accidentally touch the wrong spot so I mean I can start by hitting my countertop sliding both hands up generally until I find the base of the coffee maker and I'm going to come up both sides there's the handle on the left hand side right so you know take a smart approach I guess we can talk about those kind of things I'm going to push this back out of the way I'm going to push back the coffee maker now that I got the craft in my hand so I can put the cup front and center um, I guess I'm going to bring the cup close to the edge so I can drop the craft down to get that lip right up against the top of the coffee cup. So to do that, because the craft is bigger than the cup, I had to get the cup close to the edge so I could bring the craft down below the grade of the level of the countertop. Now again, I'm using my finger, it's my own cup. I, I feel awkward about this even when they're clean for somebody else if I'm pouring coffee for them. I'm going to pour onto the left hand side, my, my fingers on the opposite side of the cup and very close to the edge because I want to avoid the steam. Now I can feel the heat's kind of building up close to it. I got to be brave and I'm going to breathe in and breathe out and then when it touches that, ah! <laughs> I'm going to keep, I'm going to slide my coffee mug out of the way because I put it in the way. I'm going to find the coffee maker, go across the counter, find the coffee maker with my non coffee pot hand and then I just put one hand towards the other find where it sits nice leave it there and I've got a cup of coffee but I got to put something in it uh, be back in a sec now coffee is one of those things that 
you can be a connoisseur like our friend Don Blind and be a little bit of a coffee snob and get the, the grounds wherever around the world. You can get them harvested by <laughs> third world farmers, children, however you feel most conscious. And I don't know where this coffee comes from. back souls. I'm a coffee drinker. I've got in my hand International Delight. Uh, what one's this one? I'm going to open it and take a, a smell of it. Ah, it could be like a, a fake Bailey's. It could be a... I don't know what's the other one I drink. There's lots of them. There's a hazelnut. I like the flavor. They're quick and easy. I didn't want to because they're sweet. Um, there's going to be extra calories. There's going to be chemicals. Um, but it's so easy. It's so much easier. And it's very flavorful. I want to make this easy. Other people, cream, sugar, you got to measure out what you exactly like. I, I don't want to care that much. So I put this on the, the lip again. I can use my finger, but I don't need to. This time I want to listen to the sound. I'm going to and then I'm good. Right? I often get too much. Make sure it's closed. I often get too much. I just need a little stir spoon. I'll often keep a couple extra plastic spoons for this kind of purpose and just stir it around a little bit. Maybe the plastic is leaching out into my coffee. I doubt it's affecting the flavor. Am I going to get cancer from that or something else? I don't know. No, no, grommet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I wanted Grandma to come and sit on the couch with me, but he's sitting on a rocking chair. He's adorable. I don't want to disturb him. <laughs> he's gonna be an old man on his rocking chair. I'm going to be over there. As I sit down, I'm going to make sure my robe is closed <laughs> for the very visual of us. And I sit back, with my coffee cup in hand, put my feet up on the coffee table like my mama told me to never do. And I'm going to take a sip of my coffee. You know what? Some days are better than others. Today's is pretty good coffee, but I always enjoy a coffee in the morning. I've got a large coffee mug. I actually got this in California when I was there getting my guide dog Gromit from Guide Dog Sublime. So it's a nice memory keepsake of my time there and the people that I met. Um, but more importantly, I like a big coffee mug so I can pour it less. In. First of all, I like lots of coffee. Um, but I want to pour less in, that way it's less likely to spill over the top. If I went with a smaller cup and wanted to fill it right to the top, you know, I, I might spill it in transit. If I'm walking one spot to another, it's always good to have, you know, like three quarters of an inch, even to an inch of splash space inside the mug. Sadly, I won't have much time to enjoy the coffee because I'm rapidly becoming late for work. So I hope you enjoyed this little episode of Be Better Blind or Be Blind Better. Whatever. If you've got something that you do that is something you think that a new blind person would benefit from your help, then by all means, put together a little video, edit it down, you can even send me larger video files somehow. Maybe I can edit them down. Um, and we'll include a, 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 a folder, a YouTube page, maybe dedicated to Be Blind Better. I've been slowly losing my sight my whole life, been functionally blind, completely blind, about 15 years. It's very difficult, mentally and physically. The simplest of tasks becomes very mentally difficult. And you know what, if you can just make a cup of coffee, sit down and figure out how you're going to take on the rest of the world, uh, at least there's one task out of the way, and we'll deal with others as we go. Thank you for joining me. This has been Ken Roach, Registered Massage Therapist in Ontario, Canada. Uh, cheers. Enjoy your coffee.